Welcome everybody, welcome every nation Tswane, but specifically welcome to our Willows Online. Um, people that are joining us here this morning, we miss you tremendously. We can't wait to see you again in our church, but for now, this is what we do. We are meeting online and you know how special this is. We are actually in your houses at the moment. We know that you are watching and thank you for watching faithfully our sermons and participating. Um, you are not just part of a local church. People, we are part of a citywide church, but we are also part of a global family that, is pl that are planting churches, raising leaders and making disciples. And um, that is very exciting to know that we are part of a bigger family. So um, we want to congratulate all the people who had their birthdays during the lockdown season. I know it can be either sad or very exciting because I know some of you had Zoom parties, some of you had drive-through parties. Congratulations and for those of you who got engaged and some of you maybe um, celebrated the anniversary, we want to say congratulations and we hope your family blessed you and spoiled you in this season. People, I really want to just give you a few announcements and focus your attention on a few announcements. The first one is we've got a get help link and um, where people have given food and money and portions and then we go out and help people that are really in need. And we want to thank everybody who contributed financially to our get help um, fund. And we want to also encourage for those of you who really need help in this season, please do not be shy or hesitate to go on the link, fill in the um, link and then we will get back to you ASAP. Please don't be shy to ask for help in this season. And then our Connect Sundays have really been such a blessing in this season. Um, Yo, yeah, thank you for all of you who have really joined in and watched with us our Sunday sermons, sermons and um, um, discussed it with your family. We have really received so many feedback of all of you joining us in this season. But we have many other platforms where we have our online services. You can do it via Facebook, you can do it via our YouTube channel or um, definitely our website where you can get our resources and all the kids resources as well so please i know all of you are in the habit of doing it sunday morning nine o'clock we have church it's just in your home so um, enjoy it with us and then on a monday morning that is my favorite day of the week is monday morning why because we pray together as a congregation seven o'clock in the morning it's just the best way to start your week seven o'clock we pray together um, set your alarm and join us for our prayer, our, our congregational prayer meeting, 7 o'clock on a Monday. It's also on Facebook Live, so please do not miss that. And let's stay connected, um, friends, via Facebook. And if you have a testimony or you want to share with us what God has been doing in your life, please do email us or go and visit our website for any other um, information. I want to pray with you this morning and I pray that you will enjoy the service and that you will experience the Holy Spirit this morning, that you will experience the anointing of the Holy Spirit this morning in your house where you watch this. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you that I can pray for every person who is watching with us today. I pray that you will bless them, open their hearts. I pray, Holy Spirit, speak to their minds, their hearts. Encourage them like never before. I thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Enjoy the service with us. Bye, guys. Good morning, family. Today is a very special day. It's Mother's Day. And I've got the great privilege of just sharing a few words with you and just honoring our mothers uh, in our congregation. I want to share a word with you this morning. Of course, that would come out of Proverbs 31. And we know that very, very well. It says, the woman who fears God. And so often we refer to moms as the Proverbs 31 woman. And uh, that is really such a great compliment that we can give any woman. So let us read there from verse 10. It says, An excellent wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels. She's far more precious than jewels. Moms, this morning we want to say to you, every single one of you, you're far more precious than jewels. And you are sitting now today at home with your family. And I just want to ask, you know, as you sit there, don't you want to just grab your mom's hand and just tell her, Mom, today you are far more precious than jewels. And then you tell her one thing that you can quickly think about that makes her far more precious than jewels. Don't you want to do that just now?
Okay, that's wonderful. So glad that we can honor our moms in such a special way. Let's read from verse 29. It says there, many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Moms, this morning, we want to say to you that you surpass them all. Thank you for who you are in every single family that's represented here this morning. And then verse 30 says, charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And then verse 31 says to us, give her the fruit of your hands and let her works be praised in the gates. Moms, this morning we want to praise you in the gates of our homes. And we want to say uh, thank you to each and every one of you. We truly appreciate you. Don't you want to just take hands again? And don't you want to just stretch your hands out to your moms uh, in the home, there where you are. If your mom is not with you, then just in faith, stretch your hand out to her. And we want to pray for every single mom this morning. And we want to say thank you, Jesus, for what they mean to us. So, Lord Jesus, this morning, we want to say thank you for our moms. Lord, thank you that we can set a time aside that we honor them this morning. And Father, for the, for, for the representation that they are, Lord, of your grace, mercy and love in our homes, we want to say thank you. We want to honor them in our gates of our homes and say thank you, Father, for giving our moms. Lord, maybe there are moms today that's not in their homes, Lord. They are uh, they're not with us anymore. But Lord, we want to pray for those families, Lord, that, that you fill that home, Lord, with the gap that was left there this morning. And Father, thank you that we can do and ask that from you, our Heavenly Father. And again, Father, thank you for our moms. We love you. We love them. And thank you for giving us the privilege of having them in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want you to spoil your moms today. Really go out of your way. And then for those moms who are not with you, phone them, write them a letter and tell them, Mom, we honor you in our gates today. We love your family. Good morning, family. It's so good to be with you once again in your homes all across the city. My name is Fred from the Willows Congregation. It's good to be with you this morning as we just turn our attention towards the King and just worship Him together. Amen. Thank you. 
Time 
Tando, Tando, Wako, Wako. give you praise Lord Jesus we fix our eyes on you Lord worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever pray worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Yeah, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me we sing worthy worthy of every song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you, oh, we live for you. Sing Jesus, Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Yeah, we live for you, holy, and holy. There is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to the around and surely there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me
It is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken And I will build my life upon your love It is a And I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be holy And holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder and show to those around me to those around me Jesus we bring you praise Lord we worship you you alone are holy you alone are worthy We sing highest praises Sing highest praises, Lord of all. Highest praises, highest praises, Lord of all. Singing worthy, Lord of all And be enthroned upon the praises of a thousand generations You are worthy, Lord of all And unto you the slain and risen King We lift our voice with heaven Singing worthy, Lord of all.
thank you, Lord, that we can just focus on you right now. You alone are worthy, Lord. We pray that you will be enthroned above everything in our lives, Lord God, because you alone are worthy. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, Holy Spirit, now for your presence in our homes and wherever we may be right now. We just thank you that you are faithful, that you are with us, that you go through with us through whatever we face, Lord God. Right now, we just worship you and bring you praise in Jesus' precious name. I also from my side to our Every Nation Willows family and to everyone that's joining us this morning, it's great to have you and it's a great privilege for me to share uh, on our sermon or our message this morning. Uh, I think if there's one thing that we can all agree on uh, during this lockdown or this past lockdown is that the lockdown has confronted us. It has confronted certain things in our lives that maybe would have not have been confronted if we didn't go through lockdown. Uh, I don't know about you, but maybe you've been confronted with what's really important in your life, how you've spent your time before lockdown. Maybe you were confronted just with who you are as a person now that everything is taken away and you can't go back to your version of normal of what you do for a living. And, and maybe that's just exposed areas of your life, of your, of your identity that's been challenged. Maybe during this season you've seen that you've built your life on certain things that can easily be taken away. This lockdown has exposed where do we find our value as a person? Where do we find our joy and our peace? What are we putting our trust in? And, and we might have seen that, yes, we are building on God, but we also might have seen that there might be areas where we've missed God. So this lockdown has definitely confronted just who are you? What's your identity? Where do you find your value? And what have you been trusting? And, and we're going to start a new series today called, called Rebuild. And the idea from this sermon series comes from Psalm 127. And I want to read the psalm for us. Psalm 127 verse 1 and 2 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the gods stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. So we need to ask ourselves, now that the lockdown is gradually being lifted, if we look back at this time, and we really have to evaluate our lives, what have we been building our lives on? How have we been building our lives? Who's ultimately in control in the way that you're living? Because maybe during this lockdown, you've seen that there might have been areas where you've built it apart from God. Areas of your life, um, whether that be your relationships or your finances or, or just your purpose as a person, that you've relied more on your own understanding and your own ideas than really relying and trusting God, building in line with His will. Maybe you've seen that there are things that you've trusted more um, than the sovereign will of God. Maybe you found your safety in something else than just your identity as God's children. Maybe you found your significance more in what you do than who you are. And through this series of Rebuild, each one of us have a, has, a, has the invitation from God the Father to allow Him to rebuild those areas in our lives. And we want to come to a place where we say, God, we want to step aside and allow you to rebuild these areas and strengthen these areas in our lives. So I want to encourage you as we're going to speak on this theme of rebuild for the next couple of weeks, that you would join us and, and allow God to go into those areas of your heart, those areas of your life where you know that He's not in control and allow Him to, to do something fresh, to do something new. If you think about a building, it's like a build, building that's being renovated. May God come and renovate our lives in this season. So this morning, we're going to specifically speak about um, who's building and how do we align ourselves to allow God to build our lives. Because like the psalm said, if He builds, if He doesn't build, we labor in vain. And maybe you've seen this now that there's certain things that you've done in your life and, and now just looking back, it doesn't make sense. 
So we want to step aside and take up a posture where we allow God to rebuild in those areas. And to do this, we're going to look at a scripture found in Ezekiel 37. Now, the book of Ezekiel, for those of you who might not be familiar with the Bible, is a prophetic book. So Ezekiel was one of the prophets in the Old Testament, and God gave him prophetic visions and words to speak to the nation of Israel. So some of the things that we might read there might not make immediate sense, but remember that this was a prophetic message towards God's people. And we're going to specifically look at one of these messages, one of these prophetic messages that Ezekiel had from God. And we're going to look at how Ezekiel placed himself and positioned himself in order that God can build through him. And we're going to make this really practical in order that we can apply it to our lives so that we can see God build or rebuild our lives. But before we do that, let's pray together. So Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for opportunities like this. And Lord, we just pray in this moment that by your spirit that you would come and just fill our houses, fill our homes where we're gathering, Lord. Just regardless of who's with us, Lord, we pray that your spirit will just speak to us in this moment. I pray for your word to be alive and active and touch people's hearts. Lord, I pray for insight and understanding into your perfect will. And also through this today's message, Lord, I pray that by your spirit that you would speak to us individually. Guide us in your truth, Lord. Protect us against anything that wants to take away from what you want to do in this moment, Lord. And we just pray and we ask your perfect will to be done now with each one of us. And we pray this in your wonderful name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So if you have your Bible with you, I want to encourage you that you would read with me in Ezekiel 37 from verse 1. It says, The hand of the Lord was on me. And brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. He, that's God, asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Now this seems like a very ordinary and simple answer by Ezekiel when God asked him, can these bones live? And and Ezekiel says, well, you know. But there's something profound in the way that Ezekiel answers God. If we look closely and, and we just use our imagination, Ezekiel could have answered God in so many different ways. He could have answered God from what he see and, and what he sees and what his wisdom might tell him and saying, well, it's impossible. Remember, this wasn't just skeletons lying around. It was just random bones. And Ezekiel might have looked at this and said, well, God, it is impossible that these bones can come together. Ezekiel might even have answered them from his own wisdom, giving God advice. Well, God, if you choose to do this and if you act in that way, then maybe you can bring these bones together. Almost like advising God. Because sometimes we do that. God, if you would just do that, then I would know, and then we'll get to a better place. Ezekiel could have done that. Or Ezekiel could have answered from his own experience and his own knowledge. Because he was a prophet, and he would have known that in the past, through prophets like Elijah and Elisha, God has raised the dead. So he might have thought, this is my moment. God is going to raise the dead again. And he could have answered from his understanding and his knowledge and in a sense from his experience. But he doesn't answer in this way. His answer is one of humility. He says, O sovereign Lord. Such a beautiful answer. O sovereign Lord. And in that moment, he just declares, you are sovereign God. You are in control. You're far above my understanding. You are the creator of the universe. You are almighty and you are the rightful owner. And you are powerful enough to do whatever you please. Because you're sovereign. But you're not just sovereign, you're also my Lord. And in that moment, even just those two words, sovereign Lord, Ezekiel acknowledges God's place and his place, and he says, God, I submit. And then he answers, you alone know. Meaning your understanding is greater than mine. 
Your will is better than my will. And your ways is far above my ways. See, Ezekiel demonstrates humility towards God. And if we want to see God work in our lives, if we want to see God rebuilding those areas, if we want to see the power of God in our lives, building something according to His will, the very first thing that we need to do is we have to have an attitude of humility. We have to get out of the way and allow God to do His sovereign will. And it requires great humility. Because humility says, it's not about me, it's about you. And I'm trusting you. It's not my will, it's your will. And I'm going to align myself. I'm going to submit to whatever you want to do in this moment. James 4 verse 6 says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. If you're proudful, God will oppose you in, in that he will not work in your life. There's a, there's a limit to what he will do because he wants humble people. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. We need to have humble hearts in front of God. And sometimes humility requires us to say, God, I was wrong. And we will repent of our past ways and our past understanding and turn back to God and say, God, I just want to submit. I want to surrender. I want to trust you. Humility is saying, I'm not going to trust my own understanding and my own ways and my own wisdom. I'm going to seek your ways and your understanding. I was confronted in my own life just in this lockdown period of how many times that I think I might have lived from God's understanding, but now it's forced me to really sit and listen to God. And, and it was bad just to realize that there's been areas in my life where I've not intentionally, but unintentionally, might not have seek God the way I should. And the great thing about God is there's mercies on you every morning. And we have the great privilege to turn back to him and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I've, I've built this area apart from you. Humility, I know, apart from you, we can do nothing. Why don't you come and rebuild? If we continue the scripture, Ezekiel, and this is from verse 3, says, Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you and you will come alive. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come alive. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Now, if you want to see God bring life to the dead bones in your life, if you want to see God build your life and do miraculous signs and wonders, if you want to see God rebuilding those areas where you're struggling, you have to do as he commands. Ezekiel said, I prophesied as God commanded. The second thing we have to do in our lives to see God work and build our lives, we have to obey his word. If God commands, we obey. And it's not just knowing his word, it's taking his word and applying his words to our lives. At one stage, Jesus teaches the disciples about the importance of applying his words and Matthew 7, uh, verse 24, we read, Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. Friends, during the lockdown, what are the things that you've built on the foundation of Jesus and what are the things that you've built on the sand? When we apply God's word to our lives, we're building on a strong foundation and we're building in line with God's will. We're allowing God to rebuild our lives when we obey that what he's commanded us. When we apply his word. I believe God still speaks to us today. 
And I believe God speaks to us in various ways. I think that's one of the great privileges of being a Christian is to, to be able to experience God speaking to us. But I also believe there are many areas into which God has already spoken. And He doesn't have to give a new word or a new direction. We just have to take the word of God and apply it to those areas. We have to apply that what God has already commanded. God has already spoken so many things about relationships, about friendships, about marriage, about parenting. And we need to take those things and apply it. God has already give direct, given direction about finances. He's already spoken about our identity and on what we should build our identity. He's already given us a direction about His love and the value that He has for us. He's given us direction and commands in terms of joy and peace and how we can experience these kind of things. We have to choose in humility to take the Word of God and apply it to our lives. And as we apply it, we'll see God doing great things in our lives. We will see Him rebuilding those areas. But Ezekiel didn't just speak to dry bones. Ezekiel prophesied over these bones. Now, to prophesy means that you align your faith with the will of God and the authority of God. Now, you can only align your faith to the will of someone and the authority of someone if you know that person. There's no way that I can today say, well, I'm going to, whatever I'm going to saying, I'm aligning with uh, the words of our president. And it is as if our president are speaking to you today. It just doesn't make sense because I don't know what his will might be for you. And secondly, I have no authority. I do not have his authority to speak on his behalf because he doesn't know me and I don't know him. It's as simple as that. We align our faith to the will and authority of the person that we know. So in order to allow God to rebuild our lives, we must know Him. And we must align our faith to His character. And the only way that we get to know God is by spending time with Him. It is the same for us as individuals. We only get to know people. We get to know people more when we spend time with them. In this lockdown, so many of us, we're just, we're just missing each other. We're just missing the, our conversations with each other. And it's exactly the same with God. The more we are in conversation with Him and the more we are in time with His Word, in time in prayer, in time in His presence, the more we get to know Him know his character and know his will. And the better we know his character and his will, the more easy it becomes to align our faith to it. I was just thinking if, if somebody random were to phone you and say, listen, I have this great product that's going to change your life. You, pretty, you probably won't give them that much attention. But if a mentor or somebody that you really trust phones you and he says, listen, I found this thing that I think is going to be really useful to you. And I think you should give it a go or check it out at least. You'll probably give attention to his words because his words carries more authority because you know him. And you know he wouldn't expose you to something that it's not good because he loves you. It's the same with God. The more we get to know God, it easier, the easier it becomes for us to align our faith to him and his promises because we get a bigger understanding and revelation of who he is and that he is good and his intentions with us is good and we can trust him. And the more we trust him, the more we apply his word, the more we live from his presence, the more we see him being faithful. We just grow. This is constant process of growing in the knowledge of God and seeing God work in our lives, growing in the knowledge of God, seeing that he's faithful and him rebuilding our lives. It's a great privilege to live from the presence of God. Why would we not want to do it? And this lockdown has showed us that we do have time, but we have to choose. We have to choose to spend time with God, be in His Word, be in prayer, and allow Him to speak to us. The last thing, so we need an attitude of humility. We need to apply His words. And we need to spend time in His presence. But the last thing that we see here from Ezekiel, from verse 7, And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. 
I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, that's God, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, breathe from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as, I com- as he commanded me and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. The last thing that we need to do to position ourselves in such a way that God can rebuild these areas is we need the Spirit of God. I was reminded of how Jesus said to his disciples that they must wait in Jerusalem until they receive the Holy Spirit before they start ministering, before they start to fulfill the purpose that he's placed in their lives. Now, if it was important for the disciples to wait for the Holy Spirit, how much more is it important for us to desire the filling of the Holy Spirit and to live from the guidance and the leading of the Holy Spirit? I firmly believe to live a life worthy to the calling that God has placed us, a a life that fulfills the purpose of that what God has called us, a Christian life, is impossible apart from the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us and leads us. He comforts us. He gives us wisdom and understanding to God's word. He gives us um, just a, a sense of God's presence. He reveals God's word and his will to us. And he empowers us and he gives us boldness when we need it. We need to desire the filling of the Holy Spirit. And I pray and I trust that even as you're listening now, that the Spirit will come upon you. And, and I pray that we'll be a, a, a group of people that rise up as this army was risen up, that is filled with the Holy Spirit. And may we desire God every morning when we wake up and say, Holy Spirit, fill me in a fresh and a new way. I want to follow you. Empower me to live a life this, this day, in this moment, that is worthy to your name, that honors you. So friends, I want to conclude today. I don't know what valley of dry bones you might be facing. I don't know what circumstances lies ahead of you. I don't know how you're looking at these uh, emotions and these difficulties and these uncertainties. and, And it might look like something that's just impossible. And you might not even see a glimmer of hope in this moment. But I know that if we allow God to work in our lives and we submit ourselves unto Him, God is able to do far more than we'll ever understand or comprehend. And nothing is impossible for God. And in this moment, can we choose to say, God, I'm choosing you. I'm raising you up above my circumstances. I had this picture in preparing for today as when we look out out over the valley, we're either on one of two sides. There's a side where Ezekiel was standing with God And he could prophesy over these dead bones because God spoke to him. But if you're not near God, then you're standing on the other side. And this is the side where the world influences what we're saying. And the world influences what we're thinking. And our emotions influence this. And we'll be unable to align our faith to what God can do when we stand on this side. May we be close to God. And may we apply our faith to see how God rebuilds these areas. May we seek Him, may He do great signs and wonders in this season, not just for our sake, but so that He'll be glorified and lifted up. So friends, can we allow God to build our lives by demonstrating an attitude of humility, by applying His words to our lives, by spending time in His presence, and by desiring the presence, the filling of the Holy Spirit. It slows our eyes. And I want to ask you just where you are. Maybe this is a moment where God is asking you to repent and repent of those areas that you've built it uh, or built apart from Him. Um, maybe a moment where you just need to re- repent of some wrong thinking and areas where you've um, built from your own understanding. It's maybe a moment where you have to submit. Might be a moment where you have to ask God, God, what are you speaking to me in this moment? What are you asking me to apply? And how may I walk in obedience? Whatever God might be revealing to you in this moment, may we respond to that.
So, Father, in this moment, I just pray for every person that's listening today, Lord. And I pray that you would, even in this moment, fill them with the presence of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and fill us in a fresh and a new way. And that you would guide us in our Father's truth, Lord. That you would guide us in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you empower us to apply those things in such a way that we'll see you rebuilding our lives. Lord, we come in so much humility this morning and we're saying, God, we're sorry for those areas that we've built on our own understanding and according to our will. And we just want to submit our lives again in line with who you are. Lord, I pray for every person as we spend time in your presence that you would guide us, protect us and lead us. Lord, may we experience a joy from being with you, Lord. And I pray, would you not leave us? I pray for every person that even in this moment feels so far removed from you. I pray that by your spirit that you would just draw them closer, Lord. Again, Lord, we just declare that we believe that your mercy is on you every morning. And may your mercy be new to us as well in this moment. Lord, again, in humility we say it's not about us. It's about you. May you come and move powerfully amongst us. We submit our fears, our circumstances, our insecurities, all those challenges we might be facing. We're just laying it down at your feet and we're saying, Sovereign Lord, you know what to do in this moment. May you guide us for your name's sake. We love you and we honor you and we thank you for who you are. Amen. Thank you that you've joined us today and I, I trust that as you spend time with God that he would lift you up and guide you. And may we go into this season really trusting God to rebuild those areas where we're struggling. And that God will do something new and powerful in those circumstances that we might be facing. It seems impossible. Please join us next week as we continue with this. It's been great sharing with you this morning. And may you be blessed. Amen.